The Anora Boys are back in the building. We're doing it at night, though, Les. At night? You know, we had a crazy day, bro. I don't know about it. How was your weekend, though? Good weekend. Great to see some good playoff football. Um, got to relax. It was raining all weekend in California. I don't know what's going on. It's feeling like the Midwest around here. <laughs> it's weird talking to my daughter on the phone here, hearing Pitter Pat on the window. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's weird. Like, what's that? Oh, it's rain. Like, oh, word? And all day. All day. But this is how my day went. Wake up. You know, you were out. So we didn't do a show even before. We didn't do the morning show, man. I wake up. It's like an ice box in the crib, right? Mm. I go downstairs. I'm like, yo, what's up? So I'm looking at my furnace. Like, this bad fella's tripping. Like, it's acting like it wants to come on, but then it shuts off. So, you know, hit this guy that usually works on it up, and he comes over, and this dude tells me. You know, I'm thinking, like, oh, man, you know, cool. You know, fix it, do whatever. This dude comes upstairs, like, yeah, man. um, We got a bad heat exchange. So, you know, me, I'm like, oh, hey, cool. How much does, uh, does a new, you know, does a new one cost? I'm like, nah, man, you need a whole new furnace. I said, what? I said, what? That's how they get you. That's how they get you. My man was like, yeah, I, I can, you know, send you the quote in five minutes. So he sends me the quote and I laugh, right? I'm like, fam, I'm not paying that much for a new furnace, right? 75% of it go to him. I swear to God, dude. My, I hit my dad up like, yo, you got somebody? Because my dad, all you know how your dad always, always knows like some old dude? Like, I got a dude. Like, don't worry, I got a dude. Literally, he calls this guy. They roll up here. This is old man, glasses, looking like your boy off Martin. What's the mm. security guard? That cat, Otis. Yeah, Otis. Looking like old Otis. Literally goes downstairs. He's looking, he's looking. He's like, yeah, there's something wrong with the heat exchange. Man. Man, let me let me see something right quick. And he's like, you got some aluminum foil? I said, what? I said, no. <laughs> I actually don't have any aluminum foil. And so he says... Give me a second. And he goes into the wiring and does something, bro. And all of a sudden, the part of the heat exchange that wasn't working is all of a sudden working. Mm. And I'm like, yo, what happened? And he's like, oh, you know, it just wasn't getting enough air. So I had to make sure that it had enough oxygen coming in so it could fire. You know, see, like, look at it right now. See that? See that? See that? That, that boy? See that right there, that boy. Yeah, See that, yeah, that yeah. right there, that boy. See got that heat exchange that working at that boy. It was, it right. was hilarious, man. So shout out to the old man. He saved me about five stacks today. Oh man, that was great. Yo, shout out to the old man. And it's funny, man, because you time flies by. I didn't realize the furnace was like twelve years old, bro. Yep, every 10 years. I didn't feel like I, it's 12 years old, so it's about that time. Eventually, we're going to take care of it. You know, we'll get to the spring and take care of it, but it was due. Man, when that dude first told me, like, yeah, you're going to have to mess around and just buy a brand new one. I'm like, fam, really? Are you kidding me? It's just, it's just at the most inconvenient time. Right, during the coldest part of the year. Like, bro, I don't need this right now. I don't need this right now. Lucky Lefty Podcast, man. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, CFB Nation in conjunction with Irish Breakdown. Tons of great content. Thank you for being so supportive. Hitting the downloads. You can go over there and leave five stars. We would greatly appreciate it. Leave your comments. It's the Lucky Lefty Podcast. You already know. We spin it different. Left, we're going to talk about some things today. We're going to talk about Wild Card Weekend, which was absolutely amazing. I know you have a lot to say about Josh Allen, so I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to rant on Josh Allen. 
Your boys almost choked last night. Your boy, Joe, your boy Joe B almost. Almost. That cat Sam Hubbard had to. Look, at the playoffs, it comes down to inches. And, you know, the Bengals have turned their fortune over to where the ball falls in their court more times than not. <laughs> Yo, it's a crazy weekend. Oh, and your boy Justin Herbert, man. No turnovers in that game. They crazy. still lost. Still lost. They still lost. But I want to ask you a question, Left. Is Notre Dame the college version of the Dallas Cowboys, bro? Yep. Bro, I, I, I sat there today. I was watching pregame stuff. And I said, God dog it. My squad might be the college version of the Dallas Cowboys. Well, I would say the Giants, only because we got a good coach now. Like, the Giants got a good coach. And we're making it. Well, no, because the Giants haven't been winning. You might be right. <laughs> dude, dude, look. Maybe if Sean Payton ends up with the Cowboys next year, then it could be a direct correlation. Yeah. You have popping coaches, head coaches, new thing, trying to turn it around. But right about now, just, you know, that brand that you either love or hate, right? History of winning championships with a nice mm -hmm. drought right now of the last, since the last time they won a championship. Been a drought. Yeah, it's been a drill. 30 years, right? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Christopher Galloway said no because the Cowboys have decent quarterback play. Well, me and me, me and left, we disagree on that quarterback play because I've been down on Dak for like over a year now. So we disagree on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have given that dude all that money, me personally. Not with Trevor Lawrence coming in the draft. Well, I would don't say that because that's the market now. That's the market. No, 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 no. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. All I'm saying is once he got hurt and Trevor Lawrence was going to be in the draft, I would have tanked the rest of the season. It wouldn't have been a question. Mm, okay. It would not have been a question. I'm going to get Trevor Lawrence. Dak, you can go get your 80, 100, whatever. You can go find it elsewhere. It's a simple, it would have been as simple as that for me. But it is what it is. So the only thing I think that makes the difference is that I don't think Notre Dame fans are annoying. Like, I think Cowboys fans are literally annoying. <laughs> like, dude, I do. Like, Cowboys fans are literally annoying. But both of the fan bases travel like crazy to away games. They do. Both. Both travel like crazy to away games. I'm just saying there are a lot of similarities between the Dallas Cowboys and the Notre Dame Fight Knights. A lot yeah, of similarities. And I just think there's a – the main thing is that there's a diehard effect to it to where you either hate them or love them. Yeah. And there's not a lot of in-between fans that love the Cowboys. They're either a Cowboys fan their whole life a Cowboys fan where they got a jersey, they supporting the in and out, or they hate the Cowboys, can't stand them, like every team but them, and it's and it's similar to Notre Dame. There's not a lot of in between. Oh, I watch Notre Dame sometimes. It's either I'm a Notre Dame fan mm. or Notre Dame. Y'all need to get in the conference. That's all people say. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Antoine Prochardeau said Notre Dame is not the college version of the. Cowboys, we've had chances at winning championships. Win. Like, when, please tell me the last legit chance Notre Dame had to win a championship. I understand you love your squad, but come on now. Not keeping it real. Like, dude, you haven't had a championship since 1988, and you're talking about they haven't been to a Super Bowl since 97. Mm hmm. Mm, I don't know. And I love Notre Dame more than anybody, but mm, I don't think I want to sit there and argue with a Cowboys fan like 
y'all ain't done done since 97. Like, uh, when was y'all last championship? See, you don't, you don't wanna you don't wanna take it there with them. <laughs> so interesting. Lucky Left Podcast. What did you think about? What stood out for you? NFL wild card weekend. We're gonna get to the junior day. Justin Scott update and some much more stuff on the back end. But allow us to go ahead and dive into what was a very enjoyable weekend of football viewing with a ton of Notre Dame people representing all weekend. Yeah, tons of Notre Dame people. I mean, it's good to see, you know, Julian Love, uh, Jalen Smith, and Nick McLeod. Notre Dame guys, Giants defense holding down, getting the win against the Viking teams with Kirk Cousins, where that uh, that was a hot team all season. I mean, they've had up and downs themselves, but generally a, a favorite team to go far in the playoffs. And, you know, it's good to see Jalen, you know, coming from Dallas and the mystery behind why they let him go to, you know, being deep in the playoffs. I think it's awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great. Antoine Porsche Rideau is tripping, man. He said Notre Dame's like the 49ers. 49ers gives you the game, man. Come on, man. Stop. Stop. Well, I asked him when was the last time Notre Dame had a legit chance to win a national championship. He said 2012. You need to go watch that game again, bro. <laughs> you, you, you need to go watch that game again. And I'm a huge Notre Dame fan. That ain't it. Mm -mm. That ain't it. And the 49ers fan base doesn't even compare to the Cowboys fan base globally. It's not even close. So I please don't compare the fan base to the 49ers fan base. Dude, let me tell you what stood out to me. How dominant the left side of the 49ers offensive line is because of Notre Dame. Watching Aaron Banks and Mike McGlinchey. That's right. Open up holes for the running backs of the 49ers. I'm like, good grief. It's something special, huh? Good grief. You and what are we talking? We saying Alabama puts puts offensive tackles and linemen in the NFL. Man. <laughs> They put in work against Seattle. They did. They put in work against Seattle. Seattle gave them a good first half, too, left. Man, Gino, Gino, man, I'm so proud of him, man. You yeah. know, to watch him still be able to put things together and make it competitive. Mm -hmm. Really can't ask for much more, especially uh, when he's been up against so much. I think, no. Uh, no, it's not, because TCU did not have a legit shot to beat Georgia at all this year, and everybody knew that. So, no, making it to the championship game does not mean you have a legit shot. No. At all. No. No. Um, you know something else that stood out to me? Watching the Bills game, the Dolphins game, the Vikings and the Giants, and then watching the Chargers against the Jaguars. I said, yep, I see why Dabo has two championships. Because I'm watching Trevor Lawrence do what he does. I'm watching Dexter Lawrence dominate, just dominate the Vikings. That's dominate. Right. And I'm watching Christian Wilkins do work against the Bills and basically just getting under Josh Allen's skin. Going crazy. Going Christian crazy. Wilkins, and he's a great player and he's a good personality too. And I'm like, yo, this is, yeah, this is why Clemson did that thing. This is why Clemson did that thing. It's, it, man, it's really great to just watch NFL football and just see why college football teams are able to be so great. You know, and that's what stood out. That's one of the things that stood out to me. This weekend, shout out to all the alumni of Notre Dame. Aloy Gilman made plays. Drew Tranquil made plays. Had an early interception. Harrison Smith was balling out. You no, know, just Notre Dame just filtered 
just scattered throughout the entire NFL playoff on the wild card weekend. It was it was really fantastic to see. It really was. And that, yeah, that's that's why you love watching playoff football, man. The, yeah. games, the games are a lot closer. It can be unpredictable, but they started off crazy. They're going to end even crazier. Yeah. Now, I did talk to someone uh, that, that rough in the passer call. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, someone was on radio here in Chicago today that's from the officiating side of the NFL and said that the call was not about Dexter Lawrence throwing Kirk Cousins down. You cannot make contact to the head of the quarterback. He made contact to the head. Doesn't matter how powerful it was, how glancing it was. You cannot make contact with the head of the quarterback. He mm. did that. That was the thing that drew the eye of the of the uh, referee, and that's what caused the flag. So in hearing that, at least, you know, I can judge, well, it really wasn't that bad, but at least I know, like, okay, that's what you were looking at and not the fact that he just grabbed him and kind of, like, tackled him and let him. It's like I thought that was one of those um, – Grady Jarrett, Tom Brady things that we saw in the That's past, right. which, which right. would have been ridiculous. Uh, do you? What do you do if you're the Chargers, man? Does Justin Herbert need an offensive minded head coach moving forward? I think they're in kind of a an interesting spot because they have a lot of players that can win in championship. They just had a lot of miscues, a lot of games that were just that they lost that were uh, could have gone either way. A lot of pick them games. I think Justin Herbert is in a good development position. Um, they got receivers that just dealt with injuries at the wrong time. Um, you know, I think for them, they may give it one more year to see if mm -hmm. it can work. And then, I mean, at some point, knowing that it's a business and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, stop saying, dude, stop belittling yourself. You're the biggest brand in college football. San Francisco is not the biggest brand in the NFL. Stop. Notre Dame is not the San Francisco 49ers. They're not. They're not. Maybe they were San Francisco 49ers as far as making runs in the championship or winning titles back in the 70s and 60s. That ain't the case right now. Mm -hmm. So just that ain't it. That, dude, it's cool to be honest about where you are. That's true. You don't have a championship since 1988, man. You don't have a championship since 1988. And it's cool because we're still the biggest brand. That's a direct correlation to the Dallas Cowboys. Direct correlation. If you ask other fan bases in the NFL, they say, man, Cowboys fans get on my nerve. And if you ask other fan bases in college football, they say, Notre Dame fans get on, my, get on our nerve. The way they act about Notre Dame and the business of college football and what they think they should do is the same way people think about Jerry Jones and how he handles the business of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the exact literally, – it literally is – that's why I asked the question. It's literally the exact same thing. Especially the platform. Anybody that goes to Absolutely. Dallas is just going to be known more. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, Notre Dame, just like Dallas stays right – and the relevance and the win column factor. Yeah. But the difference also is, and which is similar for us, is that we have Jerry Jones. I mean, we have Jack Swarbrick, like they have Jerry Jones, guys that are trailblazers, that are trendsetters. They make decisions, and other people make decisions around them. Mm -hmm. And they and they add, and they refer to Jerry just like they refer to Jack on different yeah. things going on around college football, like they do the NFL. So. And look, I don't I don't know why people are like taking it as a negative. See, because they either hate or love Dallas. They hate or love Dallas, like fam. It, it is not a negative. It was just literally a conversation, a correlation 
not to pull Notre Dame down. Like the fact that I said Dallas Cowboys literally means like you're the biggest brand. You're the most recognizable brand, <laughs> right? And there is a love and hate. And you have a drought a national champ- on a championship or a Super Bowl. Cats out here like, no, nah, we like the 49ers. No. 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 The 49ers are regional. What are you talking about? No. Definitely regional. No. The fan base is stopped. Don't. Now you're belittling your fan base and your reach as Notre Dame. Nah, that's that's not the brand. That's the 49ers fan base does not trounce the Dallas Cowboys fan base. Exactly. You, uh, They're not being for real. Dude, there are no 49ers fans on the East Coast. I literally know a generation of people that grew up in the Carolinas before the Panthers got there, that were literally all they were were Cowboys fans. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the, it. I, man, the, the, the Raiders fan base might be stronger than the 49ers. Yeah, the Raiders fan base, man, they fill up. When they play the Rams, it'd be more Raiders and Rams at the stadium. And so far, and so far. I'm, man, that's a man. That's a legit question. Is the Raider fan base stronger than? Because you th- about the seventies. You think about the seventies. It was like it was everybody. Deeper, it was deeper than just football to be a Raiders fan. Fact, so. Everybody in the culture was either like a Steelers or a Raiders fan back then. Everybody. No, there was nobody was rooting for the 49ers in the seventies. They they barely started getting a foothold in the eighties. Barely. And you want to compare that to like 20 years before that for the Steelers, the Cowboys, and the Raiders? Come on, man. That's like saying LeBron is better than Jordan. <laughs> that slipped past you, did it? That slipped past you, did it? Uh, no, nah, I hope you saw LeBron is doing his thing in year 20. Nobody's yo, ever done that. Yo, Cal uh, Hamilton. Cal Hamilton. He's come on. He man, he's really come on. Second half of his rookie year, he really has. It was a speed adjustment that he had to get used to. That was the only thing I've always thought he was. I agree. He's a good football player, but he just had Mm -hmm. to figure out. Okay, they're a lot faster, Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I'm gonna get toasted, but then I'm gonna learn to adjust. Right, but now he's adjusting, and I think they're learning how to use him. I think they have to really learn how to use him and use his skill set rather than just putting him in center field. Yeah, he's and, not a he's a, no, he's not a space player yet. He's not a traditional guy. He's a hybrid. You have to learn how to use him, use his strengths, and put him in movement. Mm-hmm. Put him in movement. Last night he was blitzing, great hit on Hurst, force fumble, recovery, fantastic. I mean, he's, he's, he's a great player to have on the field. Yeah. Maybe not in your most exposed positions. Yeah. But he's a, a vital piece in playmaking. Yeah. So that's his his quality. It's not so much speed or strength, it is playmaking. Yeah. Yeah. I I I, I really think he's gonna end up next year kind of exploding on the scene. Because mm-hmm. I think he, he'll have his wits about him, his bearings about him, and now he'll really be able to go and make more of an impact in the second year. And that Ravens defense, that Ravens defense, bro. Next year, dude, because the two inside linebackers, mm-hmm. they have some dogs playing inside linebacker in that three four, bro. Roquan and your boy Patrick. Um, Roquan got. I'm telling you, y'all shouldn't have let him go in Chicago. That cat Roquan wanted twenty million. That's one fifth of the one hundred we had in free agency. He wasn't getting that, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some bigger needs, bro. Some bigger needs. Y'all say that for Justin. Y'all say that for Justin Fields' uh, second contract, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Just he only got one time. He only got one contract anymore. No, no. Justin Fields is only two years away from that. From making the decision to re up him. So, I mean, it's that's a tough decision. They're saving up. They, they that's why you have to go get the old lineman. You can't waste $20 million. Mm-hmm. 
You know, unfortunately, the Colts, now, the Colts are going to come and get their quarterback. They pretty yeah. much said that, right? Yes, they said I'm we're getting and they might try to dangle a wide receiver like Pittman. They might try to dangle a defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. But because they know, got him. If I'm Ryan Poles, this is what I'm starting out with. I need that first. The Forrest Buckner. I need that fourth. No, you you keep the Forrest Buckner. You mm. keep him. I go find a defensive tackle in free mm. agency. You keep him. Give me the first, which is the fourth pick. I need your first next year, and I need Quentin Nelson. We oh. good. We good. Indy is not giving <laughs> up Quentin Nelson. Really, like, oh, we said we'll Bro. give up. They said we'll give up everybody but Quentin Nelson. What are you talking about? Like, I'm just oh. saying. That's how I'm – if I'm Ryan Poles, that's how I'm starting in the Yeah, I'm definitely – I'm going. I'm asking for Q, though. At least ask for him. Like, him. hey, you want, you want Bryce Young? What's up rebuild? Right. You we'll want Bryce Young? Now peace. Facts. That'll Facts. be my that be my pitch. We'll take that new contract off your hands. Yeah, we'll, we'll all take of that. You. Absolutely. Q was perfect for Chicago. Nasty, cold weather. Yeah, absolutely. Let him get outside a little bit. You know, he been indoors all this time. Absolutely. And I think Chase Claypool is going to turn up next year <laughs> for the year in the system. I think he's, he's going to play he's better. Top five receiver already. So come on, man. We might, yeah, we might have to put that dude on the petty train, bro. You know who else is going on petty train? That dude, Andre Rising, has lost his mind. Mm. I'll tell you why on the petty train. He's lost his mind, left. Mm-mm. Lost it. This is funny. C. Dot said, um, Justin Scott, crystal ball from Tom Lloyd. Dude, I could have put that crystal ball up there last Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, he just he like did it. Uh, he pulled a CJ. He visited Notre Dame. Now he's committing this area. Okay. <laughs> we know what's going on. Tom, I appreciate it. But no, I can't. Look, I I didn't, I didn't recruit the kid. I just had a nice conversation with the young man. That's all I did. Now, now what the Notre Dame staff did in, in, you know, in response to the intel, I posted on the message board. I, you know, but for all we know, that was the master plan they were putting together to show up yep. at St. Ignatius College Prep on Friday. All mm-hmm. I can say is they showed up. The young man told me he was going to make his decision early spring. Notre Dame showed up, and the young man announced that he was ready to announce his decision on the 21st. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So, Pete, you know, you crystal balling now. You crystal after all of that that happened last week, all the intel I dropped Tuesday and Friday. After I talked to him, after he released that information on mm-hmm. social media, and then on top of that, you see his interaction with CJ Carr and Cam Williams on social media. And all of a sudden, crystal balls all over the place. How convenient. I'm just saying. That's a lot of crystal balls that went out today. Pretty much every kid that visited was crystal ball. Every kid that visited for junior day was pretty much crystal ball in Notre Dame, which lets you know how great the weekend was. That's right. Yeah, it was a great weekend. Fantastic weekend. And we're going to get go through film of three of the individuals Hopefully, left is going to be nice, and it's film breaks. <laughs> so let's wrap up the NFL Notre Dame part of uh, NFL Wild Card Weekend. Uh, Harrison Smith, I need him to get out of uh, Minnesota, bro. And I think a guy like Harrison Smith, All Pro, Pro Bowler, he's a chance legitimately to win a championship. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah, and he's been in Minnesota. All right, cool. You you know, you've done your part, man. It's time to go get on a good team and get a good chance of winning the championship. I want that for Harrison Smith. Now he's a loyal dude, you know, so he he probably loves it up there. Family's there. He's a Tennessee guy, so he loves the Midwest slash, you know, mid south. So 
But I really want him to get a chance to win a championship. Bring him to Chicago, dude. Justin to take him to the promised land. Who? You want me to repeat that? <laughs> I said bring him to Chicago and Justin will take him to the promised land. Yeah, the, last, or the promised land where uh, beating Aaron Rodgers? Or is he you're gonna have to wait till he leaves before y'all start taking over that little division? You know, dude, we got these gas gas station coordinators here in Chicago, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love what you're doing. I love what you do. But that accuracy, though. <laughs> that accuracy. <laughs> they getting off the bus stop. Man. Up. Hey, Justin, just, uh, listen, I love it, man. I got your jersey at home, man, but just... If you just work on that three step, it's one, two, three, then throw. If your first one's not there, right? Take off. Just go yeah. right up. Yeah, let's talk coaching before we end it. Um, Doug Peterson, man. Mm -hmm. That fourth down call, bro. That was. I mean, you could tell something was coming. Other when he than called the timeout, when he called the mm -hmm. timeout, it was like, wait a minute, you're not calling the timeout to go sneak. Yeah, no. That's why I'm like, they played right into it. I have no idea why. I, it just great call. You put the baby to sleep with that one, and it just shows that Jacksonville, Duval, we different now. Mm -hmm. We different. Yeah, yeah. Great comeback, great coaching. Because I think he got the young man calmed down, and once Trevor got calm. I mean, he showed why he's the one pick, man. Yeah, and it was good. They ran the same Clemson swing pass in Jacksonville between him and ATN. Yep. I, I was like, wow. They just took the same play and was like, yeah, it worked in college. We'll use it here. That guy Travis runs hard, man. Just needs oh, yeah. to stay healthy. He runs hard. Just needs to stay healthy. Well, you don't get healthier this young. Oh, uh, yeah. McDaniels, you know, vaping on the sideline during the game. He's that new age coach thing, man. That new age stuff. Marcus Freeman's still trying to be traditional, but man, he had he had team issue gear on, you know. He's just like well, he's just a fan that's in there just calling plays, man. Absolutely, bro. He went to the team store, bought the little sweatshirt, got the little all to fit it for the 2022 year. <laughs> Brought his little little breeze down there. Yo, it's it's so crazy that this weekend proved that coaching matters. Because mm -hmm. look, Brian Dable has done an incredible job with Daniel Jones, bro. Oh man, did he? Incredible. Over 300 yards passing, 78 on the ground. Saquon. Great compliment. Man, Saquon has always been a beast. You know, I was. I, it hurt when I saw him get injured at Soldier Field on that terrible field, and hurt his leg, hurt his knee. I don't know if it's more terrible than the field at in MetLife. That's a terrible field. Uh, that is true. That is true. They that field be. has taken many a knee as well. Oh, but y'all trying to do what a eleven million something no, billion, billion dollar billion. construction? Billion. I was like billion, bro. Don't throw million. Billion. <laughs> billion. Okay, if the taxpayers of Illinois don't have to pay for it, get the number right. Billion. Get the number right, yeah, get yeah, the number yeah. right. Billion. They said yeah. it's gonna be top notch. Yeah, uh, I would say the Super Bowl should be in Chicago by twenty eight. Okay. It's yeah, that, it's if good. they really go ahead, finalize, and get everything going by the end of next year, which is what the they're saying end of next year. Beginning of 24, construction should take two years because they're not just building a stadium. They're actually building like a Bears village. It, oh, it's incredible, bro. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's like its own little Bears town with hotels, restaurants. Mm. Oh, this is not just a stadium. No, no, it's just not a stadium, bro. This is like a development. That's why they went and got Kevin Warren, right? Because they don't have the restrictions of building within a downtown area like Smoke Stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they bought the full property of a rate, uh, horse track out Arlington Park, Arlington Heights racetrack. Mm -hmm. So they have limited, limitless room, bro. 
So this is really a developer's dream. They're building like a complex, their own little bear city, restaurants, man, their own uh, media building, offices, mm. all of that. Now, I, the way we hear it now, they're still going to keep the practice facilities in Lake Forest as of now. But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty immaculate. The plans are, now this lets you know, I'll keep it a buck. While all of the hubbub was going about whether or not they were going to move, I actually saw blueprints for one of the restaurants. Mm. So I knew it was done. See, when we hear about stuff through the news, media, the deal has been cut already. Yeah. So it, the deal has already been done. And I'm sorry that Lori Lightfoot is going to end up being the mayor that lost the Bears. Uh, I'm sorry. But that's basically what you're going to go down in history as, the mayor that lost the Bears to Arlington Heights. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be incredible. The Super Bowl. And, you know, you build a new stadium, they give you the Super Bowl. Right. They build you the Super Bowl. But, yeah, literally, I saw blueprints for restaurants in – might have been the end of 21. Mm. End of 21. Wow. Yep. So that lets you know, like, all of this stuff that you hear about votes and all of that stuff, man, it's, the deal has been cut. The deal has the been deal cut. And it's really not happening. It has really, really has nothing to do with, uh, really has nothing to do with the city. Like, it really, the Bears, in my opinion, and I can say this with, I, I'm pretty confident in saying this. The NFL pretty much forced the Bears to make this move. They're why, that's why there really was no negotiation with the city of Chicago. The mm -hmm. Bears, dude, you have the charter franchise. It's just the team that started the NFL, bro. Yeah. Not the Chicago Bears. They don't even own their own stadium. You know how bad of a look that is? It's pretty bad. You know how upsetting that was to Roger Goodell, Robert Kraft, Jerry Jones? You know how upsetting that is? That the charter franchise is a laughing stock from a business standpoint? So the move had to be made, bro. Yeah. Had to be made, and... Um, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I, I'll be pulling for the Notre Dame players that are left over, you know, which kind of goes against the fact that I love Kansas City, dude, but I don't have no ND representation on the squad, bro. None. I, I, man. I don't think your boy – is there anybody for ND on Cincinnati? No. Well, heck, with the injuries they have, man, we can send Joe Alt and Blake Fisher up there for the rest of the playoffs. I'm telling you. <laughs> Boy, Joe. Boy, <laughs> Boy Joe's going to need some help. Joe, Joe's going to need some help. He can't do it like last year, just be taking all those hits. So we got McGlinchey. We got McGlinchey and um, Banks left. Then you got Love in New York. Well, Jalen. Uh, Jalen, yeah, Jalen Smith in New York, too. He played who played a – he played a well of a game on first yeah. and second down for them as well yesterday. Nick uh, McLeod's over there. Nick McLeod made a big play on that punt. Big hit. Absolutely. Shout out to Nick McLeod. So the Giants have representation. Uh, I'm not sure the Eagles have representation. Not the Eagles. The Lions do. The Chargers do. Well, they're out of the playoffs now. So The Jags, we got uh... – Yes, we got uh, Austin. Kevin Austin's on the Jags. Kevin Austin's on the Jags. 49ers, of course. 49ers, of course. Um, Kansas City. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, Ronnie on the Ravens. Yes. But Ronnie was on the Ravens, but they lost. Ronnie and Cal. Mm -hmm. On the Ravens, but they lost. So, man, shout out to everybody that's still left in the playoffs from Notre Dame. 
Um, love talking wild card weekend and talking the Notre Dame connection right here. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, CFB Nation in conjunction with Irish Breakdown. It's the Lucky Lefty Podcast. You already know we spin it different. Left. As we get ready to go to the second part of the show, where we really dig into junior day. We dig into the recruitment of J- Justin Scott, take questions from LL Nation, and look at some film. It is – oh, I forgot about the Bucks and the Cowboys playing tonight. We got Zach Martin. That game's in 30 minutes. Kyle, Kyle Rudolph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Dolphins had representation yesterday as well. Derb Smythe is the oldest player on that team from the experience level. I'm not oldest in age, but oldest on the team. Like, I, mean, I think NFL teams are getting younger, which goes back to our, what we talked about last year. Like, if you want to win a championship in college football, your sophomores and your freshmen have to be able to make an impact. Right. Right? Because of the nature of the game. Right, guys are leaving. If you're getting studs, they're leaving in three years, which means your freshmen and sophomores have to be able to make an impact. That's right. And or for you to win a championship. And speaking of impact, CJ Stroud leaves to go to the NFL. Jordan Addison also made it official today. There were lingering lingering concerns for NFL execs and teams looking for a quarterback that CJ Stroud may stay in college for a year. Uh, there were reports that there was an NIL collective being put together in Columbus by some of the alumni to try and, you know, convince him to stay. There was absolutely zero reason for C.J. Stroud to stay in college. None. He wasn't about to get better. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, unless he just wanted to beat Michigan. And that's that's not a quarterback problem. That's a culture problem. A coaching problem. Coaching and culture. Like, flat out. You're just not physical and tough enough to beat them. They have a style that consistently is going to kick your butt. So you have to put that on the culture and the coach who's at the front or the forefront of that culture. But, yeah, he is probably, man, well, he's the third quarterback. You see, this is what he had to look at, left. If I stay, I'm the third quarterback next year. Without question. It's not even close. If I leave, I'm the third quarterback with a chance to jump up to the second quarterback based upon my workouts. Right. So. Something to think about. Yeah. And I think the teams that are looking for quarterbacks may end up looking a lot better than the teams that will be looking for quarterbacks next year. Right. So. Look, you get better as a quarterback by going and facing. You can't put off the struggle as a quarterback. King. What I mean by that is he has played with better talent each week that he walked on the field in college. Yeah. He won't get that opportunity more than likely next year. So for, for the first time, he's going to have to he's going to have to deal with struggle. And you have to go through it. You can't avoid it. Because he wouldn't be the best player on his team either for the first time. No. That's another great point. So either next year you wait and you have to go through the same struggle regardless. You just pushed it back a year. Right? What are you coming back for? To win a championship? You're not winning a championship next year. Not with that defense. The offensive lineman that you lost? Paris Johnson? No. You're not. You're not. And you got the same coach, same mentality. Man, go make your money in the NFL. Go make your money in the NFL. And I'm, I'm glad he made that decision. I'm glad he made that decision because it was a smart decision. And now Ohio State's going to have to suffer and walk into South Bend with Kyle McCord or the Brown. It's either one. Either way. One. Man, you just throwing meat in the middle of the lines, then. That's, That's all right. you're doing. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. You thought you thought we chewed up Kate Klubnik. Wait till we get our hands on Kyle McCoy. Yeah, we, see, we 
all last week. See, this is where we have fun, Notre Dame fans. All last week, we heard the cheers coming from Columbus. Mm-hmm. And they were so excited. Oh, CJ might come back. CJ comes back. Well, we for sure, we're a field goal away from winning the national championship. If CJ comes back, we're for sure winning the national championship. Nothing can stop us. Marvin Harrison Jr. back and CJ, unstoppable. And that gasp of air you heard earlier today. It ain't over yet because Marvin Harrison may leave. And that groan you heard coming from Columbus was them realizing we got to walk in the South Bend with a first-time quarterback. Boy, we can't wait. Mm-hmm. We can't wait. I bet you you won't have a 15-point line coming into that game. Sit Marcus Freeman with Ryan Day on the same set next year. Do the same thing. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm, a, I'm so I'm amped now, love. I'm amped now. I wish we could fast forward through the first three games and just get straight to the Buckeyes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ahead and make go. our season already. We let's four. go. Let's go. Let's go. We know it hurt. It hurt. But you got to bring that rookie first time starter. But you ain't got no transfers coming in. No. None. So when he's standing on the sideline, sweating, trying to act like he's unbothered. Yeah. And you hear that, "Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't let it be a white thing. Yeah. Yeah. Get that green out. We greened out. When you hear that, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to talk a little trash to my boy Carnell that week. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. going to talk, talk big. You're going to be on the field. Yeah, I'm going to talk big trash. You're going to be big on the field trash. getting frustrated like George Pickens in, in Pittsburgh. I'm going to tell him big. Boy, I'm going to have boy, boy, You know what I'm telling him? Boy, you might as well. Look here. You might as well bring your airbag out. Might as well bring your airbag with you on the field because that cat Benji going to have a seatbelt for you, boy. That's right. Benji got the seatbelt. Bring your airbag. We don't want you to get hurt. Locking you down. Locking you down. Locking you down. You're going to be watching TB12 or Sam Hartman go crazy. (laughs) You're going to be like, I thought y'all didn't have no quarterback. Yeah, dude. Trying to tell you. (laughs) Hey, Jay Henry, you're right. John Baptiste might go crazy against his yeah, former we, You know how we do when we still when we take other people's backups. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know how we turn them players around. Yes, sir. We John, ready Baptiste. To kill something. John Baptiste got his first South Bend haircut today, too. Mm-hmm. And Julio. That's how that's the initiation. Left. I came up with a great idea. A great idea for the blue and gold game. We got to do it, Left. We got to do a segment or an interview with Marcus Freeman where you and him, you and him both getting haircuts. That's, a, that's at least a 30-minute conversation, Left. At least. Well, you know, we dating, so I have an <laughs> hour or something to bloopers right. or something. But you got to get the cut. Behind the scenes. Hey, then you got to get the razor for the lining and for the beards. Well, they might have to cut that part off, you know, just get audio. Can't reveal how they get so precise when they pull out the geometry tools and stuff. They get the protractor, Mm -hmm. getting the real curves. You know, I don't want to release the secrets. (laughs) They might even pop that spray out a little bit, touch up the sides, you know. Oh, man. So, man, we love where everything is going. We're getting ready to get into some recruiting, but we thank you all for joining us today, man, tapping in. It's been fantastic to talk about NFL Wild Card Weekend, the Notre Dame connection, how Notre Dame correlates to the Dallas Cowboys and 
some other things that took case, took place this weekend. Apple Podcast, Spotify. Follow us on YouTube, Lucky Lefty Podcast. Smash the like button. Hit the notification bell. Let everybody know. Lucky Lefty Podcast. We spin it different. Coming up next, we'll get into Junior Day, Justin Scott, and what's happening with all of these crystal balls coming in from Notre Dame. It's the Lucky Lefty Podcast. Well, ref, well, left. Um, junior Day. Did you ever go to Notre Dame on a junior day? I did. I went when they played Michigan State at home. Did they win the game? No, not Michigan State. Sorry. Well, back then, Dan Tony was kind of uh, oh, it a was thorn. A- I think it may have been Navy at home or something like that. It was a one-off game. Okay. 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 uh, How important is a junior day? Uh, Just depending on if they they are paying attention to you, it's a a huge day. But in my circumstance, junior day was important because I really wanted to commit early so I can just – focus on senior year kind of thing. So it was more serious for me than it is how for some guys were waiting until the very end. So I was trying mm-hmm. to figure out where I wanted to commit during those visits, my junior season, off season. Yeah. So um, I ended up going up there and that's when I committed after that visit, similar to how um, this Justin Scott is, uh, is proceeding to make an announcement after that Notre Dame visit. It was something similar. And I kind of got all I needed to get when I went up there from a, a direction and what I wanted to get out of it myself. So uh, the game was cool. Um, and, you know, I really fell in love with the idea of what uh, going up there could do. And then I started recruiting my class soon after that. So um, if we go over to Irish Breakdown, I can't put my dance and jiff up. Quite yet, mm-hmm. but like I said, dude, you know we we don't need crystal balls over at Irish Breakdown, bro. This Notre Dame is doing what they do, which is a great strategy. Which is why Junior Day is probably more important for Notre Dame than anybody else. Someone asked me, does Notre Dame need to get more November slash December visits to be more effective? And I said, heck no. Notre Dame needs to continue to jump out early on these kids and get them in the fold because going up against Alabama and Georgia in December, that's just not smart strategy. It's just not, right? And then you put yourself in a bind that if you lose out on kids, you still have to fill spots, and now you're just throwing in, just grabbing people late just to have a number. So, no, I wouldn't do that. This junior day was nothing – Less than spectacular left. Nothing left. Nothing you had left. you had the, all the commits from the 24 class on campus for the first time together. Mm. Right? But this is the key. They didn't spend any time with the uncommitted guys. They just kicked it as a group. Took a group photo session, did individual pictures, rubbed shoulders with the 23 commits that were reporting early this weekend as well. So they got the full vibe of being part of the family officially, right? Even though they've yet to sign that letter of intent. The uncommitted players that came in, players like Bryce Young, whose father is a NFL Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame, Notre Dame Hall of Fame, whatever you want to say, Brian Young is that. Brian Young is that. He brought his son to campus. You know, son is bigger than him, mm. height wise already, towers mm. over him. He's not 300 pounds like his daddy quite yet, mm. but hey, it is what it is. Fantastic job. Now, you tell me this. Now, look, tell me if this, how you were taking this. So, you pull up with your father, right? Or wh- whoever you pull up with, your family. 
and the Notre Dame coaching staff comes out and they're in black suits with earpieces and sunglasses. <laughs> they snatch you out the car. They frisk you. They frisk other people that are talking on the earpieces. And then they say, F and such and so is here. F and such and so is here. Cold red, cold red. Mm -hmm. You think that would have pumped you up as a teenager? I would have been intrigued. Okay, okay. Yeah, the like, what I got going on over yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, the kids liked it. The kids liked it. Because it's like, we got to come different now because we can't we can't just come just knock on your door, drop a duffel bag off. Yeah, yeah, the kids liked it. The kids liked it. Now, this you, is the funny important. part. The fu this is the funny part. This is the funny part. So, oh, man. Oh, man. Walter Matthews, bro, from Hiram, Georgia. Uh, matter of fact, let me show you how his his film a little bit later. Let me let me get that ready for you. So Walter Matthews from Hiram, Georgia, big time tight end, bro. Last two thousand twenty four from Hiram, Georgia. This kid is like sick already. Left. He's six seven two forty, bro. Mm. Six seven two forty, right? He pulls up. He happens to be sleep in the back. So they do the same thing. The only thing is he sleep. So it hit a little bit different for him, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, he wakes up like, hold on, fam. Like, who are these dudes beating on the window in these suits? Like, what the heck is going on? So it took him a while. He's groggy. It took him a while to kind of get into it. And you pulling that big dude out the back seat trying to frisk him. He don't know what's going on. Like, hold on. Relax. <laughs> relax. Relax. It didn't go over as smooth as the rest of the kids that came. Right. But eventually he got the gist of it. <laughs> but, well, but just imagine 6'7", 240. Not really cooperating initially, and you still have to follow through with what you have to do on the coaching staff. I don't know about you, Left, but I would have backed off. Like, hey man, look, hey, it's all part. Of, <laughs> it's all part of the plot. <laughs> we're just, we're just making fun. We're just having some fun. But yo, since we're talking about this young man, dude, it's only right. It's only right that I give you an opportunity. To really dig into his film. Once again, Walter yes. Matthews from Hiram High School, Hiram, Georgia, 6'7", 240. Left, oh my God. <laughs> all do, all do. That's all I can say. Oh my God. Left, you know, I use, look, here, man, you just take it away, brother. Just take it away, Walter Matthews. Here we go. See, this is what we talk about. He's a different 6'7", 245. These are the type of players we really want to have. I mean, just look at how he's just on the field right now. Looks like he should be playing basketball. And he's fast. Oh, man, we need him. <laughs> we need him. Like just fell in love. Like just fell in love. This is what Darren Wall, uh, Darren, uh, what's his name from uh, John L. Washington for Georgia. Oh yeah, this is definitely what he looks like. But this is like Darren Waller from oh the from Raiders. the Raiders. Just, I mean, just look how big of a target that is. You don't have to be accurate with this guy. Just throw it. That's literally a just throw it type of guy. I think that he would add so much impact in the in the blocking game where he's standing next to uh, big players like Joe Alt and, and Blake Fisher. And then you you have the ability to split out. And, and the speed plus the size makes you an unguardable player. I mean, just freeze frame. He had like six, seven guys need to tackle him. 
you would think we had an extra lineman when we put him in line with the tight end. I mean, with the tackle. I mean, this is a a player that you just want to have on the field, man, and on your team especially. It's just a matchup problem, and it, it fits. When you put a guy like him and Tobias in there, get a Braylon James in there, you, you're really working with something real dangerous and something dynamic that people, I think, uh, will have a real problem with. Uh, this is a player that's an X-Factor, a guy that would play first day, in my opinion. As soon as he get on campus, he's playing. He's playing left. He's playing. It's like get a Bayless off season and you're on the field, son. That cat left say, "Oh, he's playing immediately, immediately, immediately." Now this is the thing, left. That was his. That was his sophomore film, left. Mm, mm, mm. You want to see his junior film? It probably goes crazy. He got even better, left. I just wanted to give you double for your trouble tonight, left. Just double for your trouble, man. Let's get to it. There you go, love. Junior season. Oh, man. They're throwing screens to him. That's hilarious. <laughs> Look at this dude. Throwing screens to a 6'7", dude. <laughs> Just imagine being that tall and people still can't catch you. You that big of a person, and people can't even catch you. You still want them left? That's, that's a freaky anomaly. You still want them left? Man, what? <laughs> when you're saying, oh, yeah, he's fast, you're thinking Tyreek Hill. It's understandable. But when he's fast and he's 6'7", and you can't touch him, it's next level. It's the Victor Women Bio of pass catchers. Different. He definitely played basketball, so you know he got some, some ball skills. 37-inch Burt, bro. Yeah. Yeah, come on. I know Michael Mayer's great and all, but from a talent, talent, if we like throwing it to the tight end every play, and we, we should get a player like this. This is the, the requirements to get the ball every play, is to have the size and speed of a guy like this. Malik is officially in love from a film standpoint right here on the Lucky Lefty Podcast. I mean, come on. He, he's probably what Kyle Pitts was to Florida in 2018. Well, that's a good comp. That's a good comp. But he's bigger than Kyle. Kyle was kind of skinny. This good kid, though, he put some weight on him. He's already 240 left, so you know he's going to get up to about 250, 255, easy. Mm -hmm. How do you get around that body as a safety? Bro? You can't. You can't. Look at this. Because it's different if it real was. route. Oh, my God. Because it's different if it was like, oh, I just played through contact, but he's 250. So it ain't like you just can hit him and break the ball up. That's crazy. Yeah. So left is in love, man. There you go. Hire him from Georgia. Sign him up. Walter Matthews had a fantastic visit during junior day. His words. It was fantastic. He's out of the South. You know Georgia's going to come after him. You already know that. You know Georgia's coming. Uh, damn. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. That's how I want everybody to go to sleep on a player like that and realize we can be that much greater with a guy like that. Or a school that's tight in you, you know. Man. Yo, that's the type of kid that you lock in on early. Get on them early, bro. Let them fall in love with you early. Right? That's why you know how it is in high school. You see a freshman come in, like, man, let me talk to her right now before the second semester when everybody else sees her and knows who she is. Let me put in my bid. Let me put in my bid early. That's right. right That's what Notre Dame has to do 
with people like Walter Matthews, putting the beard early, lock him down. Then you had the twins, Gerard and Jacob Smith. You talked about Jacob Smith. He is one of the best, one of the best kids out of the Northeast area. You know, the Northeast is going to be really kind to Notre Dame. Preston Zinner, Owen Wafel, Derby Lambert's the 24 offensive tackle that's high on Notre Dame, and he's high on Notre Dame. And then you have the Smith twins coming from that area as well left. Look, they solve not only the interior help on the defensive line, but Jacob Smith, who we're going to watch right now. He comes off the edge. He's pretty decent in coverage down the field as well. Got more than one move off the line. That's cool to see. Relentless. Good motor. Definitely got a good motor. That's what you want to see from kids uh, on high school tape that are athletically better than their competition. A kid that has a motor, just because we know you can easily get past the person, but do you chase the football down? Do you have good football intensity? And to be able to see a kid knowing that he's more athletic and probably better than uh, his competition still plays with effort and a motor and doesn't quit on plays, it's a good instinct and a, and a good sign to tell or a trait to have when watching film and, and, and evaluating players. So um, me seeing the effort and energy on plays and, and being able to get on tackles and stuff like how he's doing, he's definitely a great player that I think he could be a lot of a good blitzing linebacker, a stand-up, maybe play in some, uh, some uh, situations where he'd be good in the run game, but also the RPO game because he's long. And he's athletic enough to play the pass as well. So uh, really good player, man. I would like to see what he looks like in the, more in the middle of the defense than the edge um, and see where it goes from there. Yeah, I like this kid, man. He's playing middle right there, coming on the blitz. He's one of those pieces where you can literally move him around, man, and just pick where you want him to attack from. And I dare not say, mention the name Micah Parsons. But this is what Michael Parsons did when he was at Penn State. Yeah. You know, they put him in the middle, then they would put him on the edge, and they just used his athleticism and his length to disrupt. We saw him in coverage down the field, covering the running back out of the backfield. And now you see him coming off the edge, chasing down a man, look at that. And he's yeah. quick. Quick first step, motor, beast. Love to see it. Yeah. Once again. Jacob Smith also visit visited Junior Day. His words, him and his brother, they use the word immaculate. Immaculate left. They use the word immaculate when they talk go. about. Must have been around the Basilica talking like that. Yeah, bro. Immaculate. One of the things they talked about was the level, level of comfort they felt from That's the right. staff. They felt the level of comfort. And I think it was interesting that they did not intertwine them with the committed players, the committed right. teams. They allowed yeah. them to have their own experience opposite of them. That's right. And that was really genius, right? That's really genius because you can get around the committed players and the committed players can kind of take over, right? Because they know mm -hmm. they've been there. They, they feel like they own the program or they take ownership of the program. And with these guys, they were all together. You know, Bright Young, the Smiths, you know, Matthews, and the rest of the crew that came in. Man, everyone said it was an immaculate, incredible weekend. And once again, I think Notre Dame has one of the greatest ambassadors in the recruiting world in Chad Bowden. That's right. Absolutely. Chad Bolton, tip of the cap to you, my man. You continue to do an excellent job. You know, you, you're over the top, plenty of creativity. You're willing to take a chance. And, yo, the whole secret service move to make the guys feel special, you won the day with that one. You won the day with that one. Lucky lefty podcast Justin Scott left so I talked to him he I'm talking to him Friday night because he had a basketball game and I was touching base with him and in the middle of us having a conversation 
he tweets out that he'll be making his announcement on January 31st. Now, Great. When I, talk, when I talked to him Tuesday, he said that he wanted to focus on his basketball season, but it was clear that he wanted to get things out of the way, right? Because he just randomly dropped his top eight that Sunday before. And he was talking about being, man, you know, I want to get it over with. I don't want to drag things out. And, you know, he was talking about taking maybe a few more visits, you know, in the spring. And then all of a sudden, we wake up Friday morning and we see Notre Dame tweeting out that the entire coach, coaching staff was going through the state of Indiana and going through Chicago yeah. for a blitz. And they made their way to St. Ignatius College Prep right there in the South Loop on the outskirts of downtown Chicago. And they go in and they meet with the coaches and everything turned out amazing. Amazing. Let me give this last part of the conversation I had with Justin Scott. You know me, Left. I purposely, purposely ask certain questions to see where someone's mind is at. And I asked the young man, flat out, today meant a lot to you, didn't it? He said, yeah, definitely. That's it. That's it. In my opinion, and I've shared this with people, the conversation, and I, that's just a bit of the conversation I had with him. The conversation I had with him on Friday, when I left on Tuesday, I felt like it was a three-team race. Like, keep it a buck. After talking to him on Wednesday, the love he showed with me for certain things that were part of the Michigan program, his love for Notre Dame that he's always had, and then on top of that, Ohio State, being Ohio State, I always felt like those were going to be his top three schools. Always felt like those are the top three schools, right? I've always said from the jump, going back to last January, February, when I was talking to this young man, before he even got an offer from Notre Dame in May, he was begging for a Notre Dame offer, wanted the yep. Notre Dame offer. It was, it was just a wrap. It was a wrap. He was a lean. If they had really jumped on him early, he probably would have committed during the year, in the fall, flat out. After I talked to him Friday night, I don't I don't even think it's a race anymore, left. No? Nah. 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 It was a three-team race to me last Tuesday. After talking to him Friday night, my opinion. This is my opinion. I don't even think it's a race anymore. I don't, I don't well, think it's a race. I mean, that's exactly what we need. We need guys that are making the commitment like that. Uh, sees the value in it. I mean, there's definitely value in what we're doing at Notre Dame. And for him to move up his date and, and, and to be confident after the visit, saying it's immaculate, I feel like that's a done deal right there. Yo, let me tell you something, man. And this is the importance of Chicago, right? No other city has more Notre Dame lettermen in football than Chicago, bro. Notre Dame has always been Chicago's favorite football team. Always. Always. The brand in Chicago took a hit because of Brian Kelly. I'll just mm -hmm. keep it a buck. Brian Kelly had no desire to recruit Chicago. He was so focused on SEC, South, da da da, that he just totally ignored, alienated the coaches in Chicago. The only person on the staff that came to Chicago was Tommy. He was the, he was the contact for Carnell Tate. He was the contact for Malik Elsey last year. Like Tommy was the contact for the defensive recruits in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Tommy was the only one on the staff that was literally like, yo, pay attention to Chicago. Now, literally, the four kids that Notre Dame love in the 2024 class 
from Chicago. See, they recognize J.J. McCarthy, Michigan, A.J. Henney, Michigan, Carnell Tate, Ohio State, Jalen Brown, Ohio State. What's my man that was the tight end down at Alabama before he transferred over to Texas? They came from a CPS school here in Chicago. There's like, there's plenty of talent in Chicago. Plenty. Plenty. He's 70 miles away. That's a layup. That's a layup. And when you get a five star in your backyard at the most important position left, what have you been begging for? What have you been begging for? We got to go get what? That up front, that 300 plus. 6'5, 315 already left. Already. That's all we want. Out there guarding threes on the perimeter in basketball season. Six, but look at you, boy. I, boy, you just perked up, boy. Did you see I left just put his hands back like that perked up? That's all six, we five, need. Six, five, three, fifteen, guarding threes and twos on the perimeter. That's right. Let me tell you something, man. It's just my opinion. January 31st is going to be an extremely happy day for the Notre Dame fan base. That's right. That's just my opinion, Left. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Yeah. Jaleel Billingsley, the Billingsley kid. He went to he went to Alabama and then transferred to Texas. And then got suspended this year. I don't know what he was on. And then I don't even know if he ended up playing. Maybe he did. I didn't see him in the bowl game. But anyway, there's plenty of talent here in Chicago. Plenty. Yeah. Plenty. And it's happy to see Marcus Freeman paying attention and saying we need to open up that pipeline once again. Lucky Lefty Podcast. So that's that's it. That's enough intel. That's enough breadcrumbs for Justin Scott. So everybody can get off of the, you know, get off the ledge, stop complaining. Stop talking NIL. I told you during the week when I talked to him Tuesday, the young man said, nah, don't worry about that. So relax. So we talked junior day. We talked Justin Scott. We gave you film. That's what we do. That's what we do. Anything stick out from you this weekend left other than that? Man, excited to see where this offseason takes us and – Trying to catch these Cowboys Tampa game, man. Got some, got some money got to. on the line. Got <laughs> to. So we got <laughs> man, please, where you lay the money left? Where did you lay the money? Did you do parlays or you actually did a bet with somebody? We did a bet with my roommate, so oh you know. Man, you know. Man, you gonna, game. You're gonna win that already. You already know what's already. Ready code. It's time to get petty. Oh, we did a good job executing. Now, are you upset with something? And fire up the Petticoat Junction train. I just don't like you. You don't? No. What is today's petty historic Petty Junction? Petty Junk and Petty Story of the Day brought to you by Noah Whiskey at NoahWhiskey.com. That premium American whiskey at NoahWhiskey.com. Andre Rising, former NFL wide receiver, did an interview on Art of Dialogue, uh, the Art of Dialogue. Pretty interesting conversations, bro, especially when he talked about the love triangle of him, Left Eye, and Tupac. Like, check it out. It's some pretty interesting stuff. He, I was like, okay. This is some funny stuff. But this fool feels like he should be a Hall of Famer. I'm not here to argue that. Over 10,000 yards, 700 plus reception. You know, like, dude, that's, hey, you can debate. This man said I was better, better than Jerry Rice when I was in the NFL. That man lost his mind. Absolutely lost his mind. That dude wasn't better than Jerry Rice on the Raiders. Yeah, that's that's almost up there with that Scotty and Michael Jordan stuff. 
Now, hey, we can we can put Michael Jordan and his son on the petty train with that Lars and stuff for the for in, the, for, in cahoots together in cahoots for eternity, bro. Yeah, for eternity, right? Last but not least, hey, Kirk Cousins, you going on a petty train, bro? Mm. Fourth and eight. You throw a three yard out to the tight end, and then just, say, "Oh, which is we know we've been getting yards all day underneath." Get him out of here. That's why he's called First Cousins. Talking about Justin Jefferson was double team. So what? They took some chains back. I know that after the game. <laughs> you you like that? He liked it. Man, are you kidding me? Terrible, bro. Fourth and nine. There's only one place to go with the ball, bro. That's, That's right. It. That's it. That's it. Brandon Staley and the Chargers. Mm-mm. Y'all were up by 27 points, though. 27 is a bad number to be around. 27 points, bro. Mm-mm. Mm. Goofy mistakes. Just goofy mistakes. Man, Lucky Lefty Podcast, man. Sorry we got to you guys late. But we couldn't leave you without content today. That's we'll right. be back. Our boy BQ is supposed to get up with us this week. That's right. So hopefully he'll get up with us. And we're going to have a great week of content for you with interviews and content, discussing things about Notre Dame, what's happening in recruiting, and what next season is going to look like. Don't forget Apple Podcasts, Spotify, CFB Nation, in conjunction with Irish Breakdowns, the Lucky Lucky Podcast. You already know we spin it different. For the original Lucky Lefty, Sean Davis, the Nora boys are out of here. Go enjoy NFL Wild Card Weekend as it culminates with the Cowboys and the Buccaneers. We'll see you tomorrow for another edition of the Lucky Lefty Podcast.